Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, we will talk about running PowerShell code against SharePoint in an Azure function. So if you recognize this code, if you're familiar with this kind of code that we have up here, then you're good to go. We are ready for the next step. If you're not familiar with this stuff, then you probably need to watch some of my other videos before, then this will become more useful. So what I'm doing here is so just connecting to SharePoint, getting the number of lists in that particular SharePoint site. So now we're going to move this code as is almost into an Azure function. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have a certificate. So as you see, I have two missing variables here. This is an app ID and this is a thumbnail that we're going to be creating. So let's start by doing that. First of all, we go to Azure. There's Azure, and we create a new resource. And the type of resource that we want to create is a function app. A function app is an application that contains one or many functions. And we're going to create one. So we're going to just put it there. We're going to keep most of the defaults here. I'll just go PSP Connect 3. And they do catch them. So when I'm doing this demo over and over again to rehearse it, then it catches those, even though I delete them. But anyhow, so it's going to be PowerShell Core and 7.4 and on Windows. I don't actually need to do any more settings than that. I can just review and create the whole thing. And the defaults will work just fine. So there we go, create. So that's going to take a minute or two. Meanwhile, we're going to continue working on creating a certificate. So now you see it's being deployed there. Great. So let's jump over here into my uh, Visual Studio Code PowerShell window here. And now I can create the new PNP Azure certificate. I have another de demo on that. So I'll just go through it quickly now. But the difference between this demo and the other one is that we need to create a, a password for our certificate. So the first thing we're going to do is actually declare a variable of the secure string type. And that's going to be dollar pwd equals, and then we're going to use the convert to secure string, and I'm going to use a string, and the string is going to be the default Microsoft example password. That one, and it's going to be as plain text, and we're going to force that. So there we have a secure string object password, and I'm going to continue creating the certificate. The common name is going to be kpnp azure and i'm just going to use that over again so i just copied that and the out pfx is going to be c colon colon search and there we go the pfx file there and then we're going to have an out search same kind of thing i'm just going to put it in c colon search and then yeah, we're going to export a cert. And then, of course, the last thing now is that we need to put a certificate password on this. So the certificate password and the PWD object there. So that now will create this uh, these two files in the C search folder. So let's go to C search. And now we're going to run that code, and those should be created, those files, and yes, they are. And now here we already have the, uh, the thumbprint of this new certificate. So I'm going to put that in there, because we're going to need that, of course. This, however, we will not be needing. So I'm just going to comment that out for now, so that we still have it. And uh, that's it. The um, on my computer now, in order to test these things, I'm, I'm going to import this PFX file, install the PFX, and next, next, and just import the uh, password there. There we go. Let's see, I made that correct. Yes, there we go. Next, next, next. There we go. Now that's imported, so I can use that certificate on this computer for testing, which is very useful. Next step is that I go to my resource the app that I just created in Azure, go to that resource, skip down here to the settings. There's the settings and I want to find the certificates. And here I want to bring my own certificate. 
So I click on bring my own certificates, and then we add a certificate there. And the source is going to be upload. So I'm just going to do that. Upload this PFX file there. And then input the password again. There we go. And the friendly name is just fine. So let's do that. And then we add that. So now we have the certificate in Azure. If everything went well, yes, it did. Great. So in order for this um, app now, the PSP Connect, uh, to actually use this, we need to get the, the thumbprint there. We want to make sure that this is loaded now. We do that under environmental variables. So we need to uh, say that this particular certificate should be loaded. So I'm going to add a new environmental variable here. And the value of that is going to be the thumbprint. And the name of the application setting here is going to be I'm just copying that to make sure that it gets it correctly. This is what it should be. Website load certificates. That's what we want. So we have a certificate that this um, function app can use. And we also to told it to load that certificate. So next thing we need to do now with the certificate is to go to app registration to actually allow access to the um, SharePoint sites that we want to work with. So I'm going to create a new application here. KPMP Azure. Right. And I'm just going to register that. And go on API permissions, make sure that we are actually allowed to use SharePoint. So I'm going to add a permission, find SharePoint in here, there, and it's going to be application permissions, and I'm going to grant full control to this application. There we go. And then I grant consent for that. And then of course, I need to upload that certificate here also. And here, the certificate I'm going to upload is the CER file. There we go. I'm uploading that. Add. So now we have an application that we can use. The only information we need to store from here is the client ID. And we're going to put that back into the code there. So let's do that. There's the client ID. So let's see, now we have the client ID, we have the, the certificate installed. So now let's run this, because now we should have access and now this code should work. So let's run that code and see what that does. Yes, we got 18, that's the output there. So yes, the code is running. We, now we know that this PowerShell code works, our certificate works, and uh, all is good. Now we need to just continue with our Azure function and actually create the code over there. So let's go to overview here. I, of course, I do want to save this. I want to apply that first. Yes, confirm this environmental variable that I just did. Great. Now the app settings are updated. Now I can go into overview here and create a new function here. Yeah, it's still working because I just saved that permission there. So let's see if we refresh. Now I'm going to create a new function here. There we go. I'm going to create the function in the Azure portal. I'm going to use a timer trigger. And this timer is using a cron format. So this means every five minutes, we can just leave that for now. And now it's creating the function. Here's the default script. And this takes a parameter here with a timer, we should re retain that the other part of the code we don't need. Let's now copy over the code here, all the code that we need. We save that now. And then we go back to the function app and we look at the app files because we do need to modify two app files here. The first one is the profile, the PS1. Here it's saying if we load the default Azure objects and we don't need to do that. So I'm just going to comment that out and I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go to the um, requirements and the requirements contains all the modules that I want to load in my script. And to get the syntax right, I'm just going to paste that also. This is loading the latest PowerShell 2.star version. So we save that now. And note that now if I have many scripts that are accessing SharePoint inside this function app, or if I have many functions to use the correct nomenclature, I only need to make this change once. Let's go back here 
and go into my trigger. Now we should have everything ready to actually run this code here, right? So let's try it. Test and run. We have to confirm that we actually need to run this. That we want to do that. Let's confirm that. And we should see some output here. We should see that same 18 coming up there. Here's my output coming out very soon. Let's run. There you go. Information 18. So yeah, it's it's did what it's supposed to, and I actually run it twice. Here's the other one coming out. So yes, we're seeing 18 lists coming out. So there we have the code that is now running inside an Azure function. So now you can continue working on your script and you know adding more features and using the whole power of the SharePoint PNP PowerShell module, and you can run your code inside the Azure function. Thank you for watching this demonstration.